Today, I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts and opinions on all of the massive updates coming to Rise of Kingdoms, as well as one thing that I think everybody missed. What's going on, guys? Cheers. So everybody and their mother has talked about these updates. Why? Because there hasn't been a lot to talk about lately, and the Rise of Kingdoms community has been thirsty for some exciting new information and so pretty much everyone has already talked about the new commanders the sea battles the new kvk format the museum all that stuff but i still got a few comments from you guys asking me to give my thoughts and opinions on it too so here we are the first thing that i want to talk about is the museum now one thing that i want to make very clear okay is that when rise of kingdoms does something bad we should talk about it when rise of kingdoms does something good we should talk about it okay it's not a one-way street if we're gonna be criticizing the developers we also have to be praising them when something good comes around now the museum is a very good concept this is something that i am a very big fan of and i've been saying forever that the old commanders the gold key commanders needed a buff right and this is a way to buff those commanders including ones that aren't in the gold keys like Yi song Ye and richard the first so the commanders that i think needed the buff the most are getting it which is exciting now here's the thing are any of these commanders going to be meta now that they have a nice little buff the answer is no i don't think that this changes anything when it comes to what the main rally combos are going to be what the main garrison combos are going to be all that this does is sort of bridge the gap a little bit from the old players who have maxed pakal heralds and maxed zangus and all that stuff right going up against new players in season of conquest who have uh, charles martel right so it bridges that gap a little bit but i don't think the meta is going to change that much now some of these commanders like charlemagne for example you know the buff isn't going to do anything and that's the thing i think some people were a little bit upset that some of these commanders needed a huge buff to make them viable and they didn't get it and here's the thing that was never really the intention of this feature from what i can tell and i don't really want these commanders to be meta i just want them to be usable i think that's a completely fair and justifiable middle ground to the old free-to-play players and the new mega whales so at the end of the day i think this system is good now my only criticism of this system is that it's sort of locked behind a battle pass type of progression which i just don't think is necessary i mean at the end of the day the old commanders needed a buff period why lock that progress behind at least partially behind a paywall i mean sure it's ten dollars that's you know it is what it is but it still excludes the free to play player who a need this buff the most and b are the majority of the player base it's literally the majority of the player base is not going to be able to access this bottom tier for the buffs that they need the most and that's what's probably the most frustrating now again we do have to wait and see how this system will actually work uh, but at the end of the day i am excited that these commanders are going to be useful i'm curious to see how commanders like minamoto Cao Cao perform in the open field now that they've got what i feel is a meaningful buff i think Cao Cao has a meaningful buff now i'm sure he's only a single target damage factor but i think he'll be somewhat usable uh, i'm going to touch briefly on this new kvk format because i don't really have that much to say about it the thing with this new kvk format is i'm, I'm cautious about saying whether or not it looks like it's going to be a good idea because March of the Ages proved that we have no idea if a KVK format will be good until we try it out. So in this instance, uh, I really don't know. Okay, I have no idea how this KVK format's going to be. It's a little bit gimmicky. I just hope it's nothing like March of the Ages. That's really whatever March of the Ages was. I hope this is the complete inverse of that and then let's let's try it out. I'm down to try it out. But until then, I hope my kingdom doesn't try this KVK until other people try it. We were sort of the guinea pig for March of the Ages and it sucked like it I never wanted to play a KVK less than that uh, and I just don't want to I don't want a guinea pig again okay so y'all play this KVK you tell me if it's good and then and then I'll give it a try but I, I did my fair share of uh of guinea pigging okay and March of the Ages was dog shit, so hopefully this KVK format is better I will note in the bottom corner here you do see the finding team thing so this means that he's actually queued up for the sea battles and he's able to go ahead and do other things so that's similar to the queuing system in pretty much every other game mode here in rise of kingdom so it's good to know that that is still working exactly the same now they did briefly mention what appeared to be spring events and also a sort of chinese new year event which is awesome uh i think we've seen these exact types of um 
events before right so i don't think anything has changed there i will say the new skin being infantry defense is good and i think it looks awesome so i'm excited to get my hands on this skin i think it's actually a useful skin so if you're an infantry player this could be something that you pick up if you don't have an infantry defense skin already or if you just like how it looks obviously an infantry health skin is better um but you know if you're a new player and this is your first holiday event this is actually a pretty solid skin to pick up and they did show off some of the skills for these new commanders primarily just Bertrand I don't know why they didn't show all the skills for Nevsky however we do know those skills um the TLDR here is that Bertrand doesn't look like he's really gonna move the needle I don't see pretty much anything in his kit that suggests that uh he would be super powerful I mean this damage factor is high but it's single target and reduces the rage by what I assume is 60 total could be less if it's only triggers once and not every second like the uh, damage but he does look like a pretty tanky rally right he does have defense he does have health he does take less damage he does heal so from those perspectives he's interesting but at the end of the day I don't think that he's going to be better than something like XY and Nevsky right if we take a look at Nevsky we see he's got a massive single target damage factor and a nice defense reduction if the enemy is surrounded and I mentioned in my video where we first saw these two commanders I said that if one of them was a cavalry skill commander that it would be really a really good pair with Zhang Yu and I think that that's what's going to happen here I think a Zhang Yu Nevsky pairing is going to be incredible probably Zhang Yu primary because of the lower rage requirement but we see a really nice health buff a really nice attack buff we see a really nice defense buff he's literally buffing all of your stats um there's a lot to love about Nevsky um his last skill giving you a ton of skill damage as well like that's crazy good when XY uses his active skill then for four seconds you're going to get another 35 percent skill damage so a total of 60 percent skill damage bonus and that's going to happen during the time when Nevsky's skill goes off and it's already a huge damage factor so I think Zhang Yu and Nevsky is probably going to be the new cavalry meta obviously we'll have to test it and see if that is the case um but Nevsky overall is looking really really promising and he's on the wheel of fortune which is excellent I love when meta commanders are on the wheel because that makes it easy for everyone to get access to them you don't have to compete with the whales you just get save up your gems and you spend them and you get some amount of sculptures so that is great I'm happy to see that Zhang Yu also on the wheel so now you're gonna have to decide which one you spin for um but if you already have Zhang Yu you're in a great position to get Nevsky and I think that will be a very good combination uh will this make Zhang Yu better in the open fields maybe um I think Zhang Yu performs well in the open field he does get targeted very quickly because he's kind of squishy and you want to take out that AoE right so maybe this will make him slightly better but the fact that it's single target damage factor really makes me feel like this is going to be a rally commander maybe less of a open field commander finally let's talk about the sea battles now here's the thing this game mode is very confusing to me this I don't see how this game mode relates to the core rise of kingdoms gameplay in any way are we using commanders in this game mode in the little opening theme for the sea battles they do show multiple boats with two commanders on it each and those commanders are the same troop type so here we see Attila with Lancelot and if we keep playing we see Ragnar and Bjorn so is it just a coincidence that this opening theme shows two commanders per boat or are we actually going to be able to put a pair an army of commanders inside a boat that's what I'm curious about they don't make any mention of that at all when discussing the sea battle event but if we don't use commanders at all in this event then I just don't it, it feels like it's totally separate from rise of kingdoms does that make sense obviously it still has the same open field movement but it seems like you do damage in a different way I mean you have the triremes that are ramming daily damage based on your actual proximity on the map to the target that you're hitting you can actually deal damage at a distance with the uh, I forgot what the archer boat is called uh, but why would this be a cavalry boat like how does cavalry relate to this specific ship if you have a if you have a cavalry buffing city skin is that going to buff the ships that have the cavalry icon uh, again it seems to me based on what they've told us that it, you know you're going to be on a level playing field with everybody else and maybe that means that your VIP level won't take into account, you know, damage bonuses, things like that, your defense bonuses. You know, if you use a defense token like in your city, you know, like one of these guys, the 12 hour enhanced defense, is that going to apply to this game mode? It seems like it won't. But again, if this game mode exists in a vacuum, then 
I don't know. It just doesn't seem like Rise of Kingdoms. It just seems like Rise of Kingdoms made a sea based battle game, which is cool. I mean, it's, it's exciting. And, you know, I want to emphasize that all of these updates are exciting. I'm happy about this. And again, I think if Rise of Kingdoms does something good, we have to praise it if we're going to be critical of the things that they do that we don't like. OK, so I'm happy about all these updates. You know, the game needed a breath of fresh air and here it is. Right. And that's amazing. I love the game, so I'm happy about it. Um, I'm just curious to know how this game mode is going to affect the rest of the game. Like, are they going to implement this in other ways? How do your commanders work? How is there going to be an equipment system? That's what I'm curious to know. Uh, and why would I play this game mode? That's really what it is. If this game mode is independent of the rest of the game, like if you don't use your commanders or your equipment or your VIP level or your city hall level or anything, if there's no technology involved, if you don't use any of your currently existing progress here and it's a standalone game mode, then why would I play it? like yes maybe it's fun right and maybe uh, players do really love this game mode um, but is there going to be specific rewards for this game mode are the rewards going to make you more powerful within the game mode or are you going to get rewards for your commanders right because like you know are you going to earn like equipment or skill resets from playing this game mode or getting victories I don't really know how that's going to work um it would just feel weird to obtain uh you know items that enhance your commanders for a game mode that doesn't use them does that make sense so there's a lot of speculation here and i just want to play the game mode to see what it's like uh, i think that's going to be pretty much the biggest thing is we just got to get our hands on it and see what the details are um because at the end of the day this just seems like an open field uh rise of kingdoms themed sea battle game mode which is cool but i just don't see how it relates to the rest of the game now i do want to point out one thing here for the warship configuration uh, it does say the durability is 200,000, which as you guys know is the base size of an army you know excluding vip and all the other stuff like that um if you're max city hall level you can have 200,000 units in a level 60 army right so the durability here matches up with army size is there going to be some sort of relationship there i'm curious to know if your city hall let's say 10 are you going to have a lower durability for your armored ship in that case just because you can participate in the event doesn't necessarily mean that you should however i would like to think matchmaking would pair you know level 10 city halls against other level 10 city halls if that's how the durability system works now the number one thing that i think everybody just didn't talk about or glossed over is that these are legendary ships i mean you can see behind them that th this is there's a rarity here these ships are legendary and they have the same shape as the commander icons which means is this is this game mode or is rise of kingdoms going to treat ships just like commanders meaning this is an armored ship but is there going to be a another armored ship you can get from a tavern key or something along those lines or a wheel that comes around or some sort of event that comes around where you can get a unique version of an armored ship or a reskin of your armored ship that gives you five percent health or something along those lines if we see these legendary ships does that imply the existence of an epic ship or an elite ship or an advanced ship i don't think that that's a coincidence I don't think they just randomly picked a legendary i think that that means something and if that's the case is that going to be pay to win right and i hate to to say that and bring that up because again i'm excited for this event and i'm excited for these new things coming to the game and this is all speculation right but the first thing that i always think about is how could they make this pay to win because more often than not that's what ends up happening so we're looking at what appear to be legendary ships and if that's the case how do we get these legendary ships uh, does everybody start with legendary ships if that's the case great I would love for that to be the case especially because they said that everybody starts on a level playing field so that would be my assumption however I think it's important that we keep in mind that there is a rarity here so it seems and if that is the case that could imply that there are ways to get more powerful ships than other people again this is all speculation i just think that that's an important detail that is worth mentioning i think that there's a lot of parallels between the ships and the commanders that we use they have four skills they have a troop type they have a sa the same durability they have the same icon shape here so it seems to me like the ships are going to sort of parallel the commander system they didn't mention anything like that uh so this is again speculation but i just i i want to get into the game mode i want to try it out i want to see how that goes 
and see how it plays out hopefully uh there is no pay to win mechanics here however we are talking about rise of kingdoms which is it's a pay to win game like let's just be real that doesn't make it bad it's just a fact anyway with that being said guys if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into that youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it i would love to know your thoughts and opinions on all these updates in the comments section below tell me what you think i would love to hear from you guys and while you're down there if you haven't subscribed yet make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace